Hello guys, in today's video we are going to take a look at making a few changes to the RC Tractor Guy control board, the, the version 4.1 board, uh, which would have been the last generation that I, I would have kind of made. So now we're going to take a look at 4.2 and we're going to try and get a little bit more out of the Atmega 328PB chip that we have. So it's the B that's significant. Okay, so now if we take a look at the two chips, so here is a uh, that mega, so three two eight, well three two eight P, whereas uh, on this side we have the PB, so that's kind of the significant uh, difference here. Uh, this one is more commonly used on uh, an Arduino Uno or Pro Mini. That's usually the chip that you see and it predates uh, the PB version uh, by a good few years I think. The PB version is basically an updated version of the P version and it's kind of a drop in replacement. It, as far as I know the code that you would have written for the P version will work on the PB version. The difference is mostly in the pins that you have available on the PB version. You have a few extra pins so if we take a look at the P variant here, so you have a ground here. So this ground is replaced by PE0 here. So PE0 is now a digital input output. If we go back over here, we have v, uh, VCC here. So that VCC is being replaced by PE1. So that is another input output. So we have two extra input output pins here. If we come down this side of the P chip you'll see uh, ADC6 here so you might have seen that on your uh, your Pro Mini as an extra pin that's not populated, it's not in the row. Same with ADC7 that's because those two pins were input only in the P variant but now when we come over to our new version we have PE2 and PE3 here. So there's a couple of little differences there. So now you can choose to have them as ADC inputs, but they are also functioning as input output pins. So another for input output pins is something that could be very useful. You also have extra timer functionality up here. So these three pins now have timers on them. You can use them as a PWM outputs if you wanted uh, as well as that there's more SPI uh, functionality here so you've a second SPI this is your normal pins over here and your second set of uh, SPI pins there so there's quite a few extra features there but our circuit is already set up with these pins fixed as uh, well as VCC and ground so we can't make use of PE and PE0 here. So in our board we'll have to bring those pins out but we we'll leave in a jumper so that if you want to put a P chip onto the PCB you just have to solder across the jumper and they'll be connected to VCC and ground again. So we'll add that feature in. Another big difference with the PB chip is that the full swing oscillator has been removed. Uh, that means that you can't use the uh, crystal and uh, two capacitor uh, setup that you, you would have very commonly used when you were doing a sort of minimal Arduino setup. Uh, in this case it's going to be tricky to do that. So what we might do is try to use a, a sort of contained oscillator that will uh, allow us to just feed a 16 megahertz pulse onto one of the crystal pins of the chip that'll free up another pin as an input output if we can uh, make room to, to get that out of the board somehow so that's the full swing crystal oscillator it's been removed so it's not going to be on the PB version but probably something that will uh, make a difference then you mightn't have that crystal oscillator which is usually the best most accurate way to 
clocked the microchip but the internal factory uh, oscillator is coming calibrated to 2% which is a good bit better than the previous version but it still probably wouldn't be as good as a crystal and well just a, an external crystal setup but as well as that that's at 8 megahertz so it's it's half the frequency that you would have been getting from your external uh, oscillator so we'll try and, and set up a new oscillator if we can and just a quick reminder if you haven't done it already don't forget to hit the subscribe button and get the bell on so now I'll just show you the changes that I made to the circuit so we were talking about our VCC so you can see here all our pins are connected to VCC this is the Atmega G28P version and down here all our pins are connected to ground and we're using the crystal oscillator so there's our crystal and capacitor 1 and capacitor 2 fairly common for an Arduino so if we switch over to our new design so for our PB variant then we have freed up our PE1 pin here so we've just disconnected it from VCC and connected it there and we have freed up our PE0 here disconnected from ground now in case we want to uh, put an Atmega 328P onto this PCB we've added in this little section here so what's happening here our PE0 comes in and it goes to a header that we've added so that's just a true hole header so that we can add a 1.27 millimeter spaced header pins to the PCB if we want to use that uh, that pin so that's okay for the PB variant if we want to use it with a Atmega 328P chip we can just jump across this uh, this jumper here and that will connect that pin directly to ground so we won't be able to use the pin out of here well we could use it as a ground if we wanted but the important thing is that the chip would be seeing a ground signal for that pin it's the same story over here when we're looking at the PE1 pin so on the PB variant again our jumper is open so no connection at the VCC and we have routed our pin to a header here so we can take out that uh, that pin signal there and make use of it if again if we wanted to use a Atmega 328P all we do is jump across this joint here make that connection and then this signal is just VCC and that's all you'd see here is just VCC you'd have no control of an output there but you couldn't control it with the with the P variant anyway so that wouldn't matter now if we come over and look at our crystal pins so we'll do the easy one first the PB7 XDAL2 pin that we have connected here just to a jumper so that means on the PCB we will just have an exposed copper pad that we can take the output from that if we want to so I probably could have uh, put a pin in there somewhere first but it was kind of uh, I was running out of space for putting the uh, pins in so I just added the pad It'd be good enough if we absolutely desperately needed that extra pin because we do have a lot of outputs as it is so on our X dollar one pin then we come through a jumper again so we can connect that here to use this external clock or if you wanted to test out the internal oscillator you would disconnect this jumper and that would leave you with no external clock and you can just use the internal one and if you needed to test out your code uh, for some reason if you had some reason for testing out the internal oscillator you could just disconnect it there but generally you'd want that connected you'd use this external oscillator which is going to be a little bit uh, more accurate uh, it's also going to be 16 megahertz so it's going to be a good bit faster and we've also left a pad here so this this is just an exposed pad that's going to let us put a, a test probe on it so if we wanted to view that clock signal on our oscilloscope we just connect it to this pin here so quite a few changes to our PCB there and getting them all fitted onto the 
uh, actual small space of the PCB is not an easy feat either. Here we have our PCBs now, so on this side you have the top surface and this is the bottom surface. So a few of the changes that we have made. So these are our jumpers. So we added those in for the extra pins. So these would have been the two clock pins. And these will have been, I think it was PE0 and PE1 were the pins that were either connected to ground or connected to VCC. Uh, actually that's ground, that's VCC. So those are those optional ones. All you do is put a blob of solder across this joint. So don't forget this this whole length here is only about twenty mil so this is a very small space. It wouldn't be it wouldn't be hard to get a solder to jump that little gap there. The next thing we done differently was we added in this uh, little oscillator, external oscillator IC or or chip, whatever you'd call it, I'm not exactly sure, but it's kind of a little uh, metal can type component that's uh, uh, soldered from the underside. So it's probably pretty hard to solder this by hand. Then if we look at the underside here, this is the little test pin I was talking about. So I've added that in so we can probe that with our, uh, with our oscilloscope if we want. I also added in a few extra test pads here so if we needed to do uh, any high voltage programming you could connect to those two pins because they are not exposed along any of these external pins they're just there to be connected to the NRF 24L01 and here you can see our extra two output pins that have been added there so we have we've exposed them and they are in line with these pins but I haven't changed this uh, header here so this board is backward compatible with the previous board there will be no issue plugging this into any of the other um, motor control boards that I have in my models I've also exposed these two pins here uh, which are the two pins that we had the test pads here and the reason I've exposed these two pins here is because not every circuit that you uh, design is going to need a radio module, an NRF 24L01 soldered in here. So what's the point in wasting these two pins? You might want to program this PCB just to uh, control something autonomous, like something on your diorama for example. So those pins are there in case you don't want to use an NRF 24L01. And the final little change I made was I want to try this different regulator here. So this will mean that we can't use voltages that are much higher than 5 volts. But I think with our 1S LiPo battery, which isn't going to be much more than maybe 4.3 volts, uh, we should get a much more stable 3.3 volts as that battery discharges. So as it goes down towards 3.7 volts, I'd hope that the new regulator will be able to supply a fairly stable 3.3 volts. Well that's all I wanted to talk about in this video. If uh, you liked it, don't forget to hit the thumbs up button. In the next video I'd say I'll probably be uh, getting the Gerber files ready for this PCB and we'll probably be uploading them to a PCB manufacturer to get the PCBs actually fabricated. And after that we'll be ready to test out the boards and see if these changes uh, work out well for us to we get good control over these extra pins on the PB variant of this Atmega 328. So as always if you want to discuss the video uh, head down to the comment section below the video or you can head on over to the forum. But that's everything for today so thanks very much for watching.